Welcome back everyone to part 3 in designing a road in Civils 3D. My name is Ferdi and in this tutorial we're going to be looking on how to create an assembly in Civils 3D. Now if you have not watched part 1 or part 2 then I'll urge you to watch it as they have some tutorial files that you can download and follow along and it will be useful to keep track because we're going to keep doing these tutorials based on files. So without further ado, let's begin. Before we start, we need to understand what is an assembly. An assembly is an object in Civil 3D that consists of sub-assemblies, where in this case we have a carriageway, we have a curb, we have a footpath, we have a swell. Now all these sub-assemblies are defined, predefined by Civil 3D and the UKIE package. However, if you want to create your own sub-assemblies, there is this great tutorial by Jeff Bartles that goes in depth on how to create your own sub-assemblies using the sub-assembly composer that comes with Civil 3D. I'll leave a link in the description below. But in our case, basically what we're creating is a road cross section and we're going to tell Civil 3D, hey, this road section, I want it to follow the horizontal alignment and the vertical profile. So how do we create an assembly? We're going to go to home, create design panel, assembly, create assembly. We're going to put, give it a name and we're going to discuss it later. Description, we can give it a description. Assembly type, we're going to keep it other. And the styles, it doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter depending what you want to show in your assembly. But if your styles do not match my styles, don't worry. It's because I have the UKI package. Probably if you're in a different country, you have your own package or just use the Civil 3D default ones. The results should be the same. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click here to put my assembly. If you see, it just zooms in to the point. Now, this point right here is the point that will be following the horizontal alignment and the vertical profile. So whatever we put on the right hand side will be created on the right hand side of the alignment. And whatever we put on the left hand side will be created on the left hand side of the alignment. So how do we put the sub assemblies? To do that, we're going to bring our tools palettes and you can bring it by clicking this button here or just do control three as a shortcut. As I said before, Civil 3D has its own sub assembly. So if you right click here, you can see that we have some Civil 3D like basic lane, basic curb, basic barrier. But in my case, I want to use the UKIE design. I need a simple carriageway. So I'm going to click on carriageway and then click here and here again. You can put on both sides. Then I will need a curb because we need to protect the pedestrians from the cars. And then we will need a footpath, so detailed footpath. And I'm going to click on these circles you can see here, so it's that's where it inserts a point. And that has to do something with the sub-assembly composer. These are like the points that create this sub-assembly. And then we need an edging curb, so British edging curb. Click on the red circle and right here well and then we can either add a simple verge and then add an earthworks cut and fill basically what this does it ties in the whole road to a target surface target is a keyword write that down we will need it later and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side so we didn't add the verge on this side we just add this side just so you can see the difference so now we have actually done our assembly. We're pretty much done. Obviously, we need to tweak a few parameters so we can get the results that we want. But basically, this is how you create an assembly. Now, let's dive in more detail. I want my carriageway to be, let's have a look, what is it? Six meters and two meter footpath. So here it says 3.65, 3.65. So if I select the carriageway, you can see we have some properties here and parameters. You can see I found the width here. So if I change it to three, you can see change to three. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side, three. Now, some of the parameters are self-explanatory, but if you wanna go more in depth, then if you bring your tool palette and go to the UKIE tab, at least for the UKIE ones, you have the user guide and reference UKIE 2024. So if I click on it, it will take me to a website where it has everything about the UKIE. And then if I go to simple carriageway here and click for detailed documentation, it has all the information that you need to know about that specific sub-assembly. 
and you can see we have a section where it discusses the slope you can see here no step slope step slope smooth slope slope one in three so there is a lot of elements and you can see that slope shift components so you've got like smooth steps so you can change it so if we go to our sub assembly and we change it let's find it no step slope let's go smooth slope see it changed it here as it is well we're gonna go no step slope another thing is you can create two similar assemblies and edit them simultaneously because they are the same assembly it works the same thing as the polyline when you select multiple polylines and change the color pretty much same story so in my case the footpath is two meters now rookie mistake is they just leave it at two but in our case we have the curb and the edging with the footpath is two meters so curb is 125 mil edging is 50 mil so therefore the footpath actual footpath will be 100 1825 mil or 1.825 and then we have the daylights and we want them to be one in three so i'm gonna go to the cut three and the fill three the last bit is the assembly name like the whole assembly now how you name it it's all up to you there is many school of thoughts if you ask five engineers probably they'll give you different answers but similar to each other the one i'm in favor of and this comes from a colleague of mine val that suggested is to name the assembly exactly how you created it from left right so the naming will be one in three daylight one meter verge two meter footway six meter carriageway two meter footway one in three daylight obviously we're not going to type all this but we can do a short version of it so we're going to go full carriageway and then we go three for one in three daylight one meter verge two meter footway six meter carriageway two meter footway i cannot see what i'm typing but I believe it should be right and three daylight and you can see here that if we make this slightly bigger you can see get even bigger there you go full carriage rate three daylight now we can do it in the description as well so you can type in the description full carriage way uh, to let's say bcc standards for example but just giving you an example so this will come handy later on where we're going to be creating our corridors but for this tutorial, we're going to keep it here because in the next tutorial, we're going to go more in depth. So I broke this tutorials in horizontal alignment, vertical profile, assemblies, and the next one will be corridors, which where the assemblies will come in. So if you like this tutorial, hit the like button. It will help me a lot and leave a comment what you think uh, and or if you have a different naming convention that you use and also share it with your colleagues so they can also learn how to design a road. And I'll see you in part four where we're going to learn how to create a corridor using these assemblies and then in part five to create a junction. So hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.